As you can see, Mr. Brehan, we've had our eye on your list for some time now. One of the benefits of seeing a movie at home on a big flat screen, nicely and brightly lit, instead of in the theater where it's a little bit darker, at least as it was in 1999, is that you can see right through everybody's sunglasses. Hi everyone, welcome back to my series, The Decades of Action Challenge. Uh, it's Friday, it's a nice cool Friday, nice cool breeze, which is welcome for August. Um, we haven't had too many humid days here in Chicago um, during this month. But, um, you know, whenever we do have a really hot, humid day, I'm, I'm always just like, oh, please, stop, I'll let it be over. Uh, so I always try and appreciate these days when they come along. Uh, the Decades of Action Challenge, a series, is inspired by a uh, series called The Epic Film Challenge, which has been conducted by Forker Ball and uh, Razor Wire Reviews. Excuse me, there's a cat here um, poking around, just uh, if I seem distracted. Uh, she's, uh, her name is Mia. <clears throat> Hi, Mia. <clears throat> anyway, um... Uh, Forkable and Razor Wire Reviews, uh, they were uh, taking entries from a book called um, A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die. Uh, and actually, um, Razor Wire is still doing it. Uh, he's been doing a lot of them recently, um, so you can check that out on his channel if you want to. <clears throat> um, basically, A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before I Die is like this list of films. Um, they've been, you know, selecting movies to watch and review on YouTube. Um, and uh, I'm doing a similar thing except with a series of essays called um, uh, A History of Violence by Tom Brehan uh, for avclub.com. And basically he's uh, going through uh, each year, starting with 1968, and picking a movie which he feels is the most important action movie of that year, uh, moving all the way forward uh, to uh, this year, supposedly. <clears throat> we'll see in December whether or not he picks something for 2017. Uh, anyway, um, so I'm on to 1999 right now, and um, there wasn't any action movie or any movie of any kind that was more influential that year than The Matrix, um, which was uh, written and directed by the Wachowskis, uh, formerly uh, Larry and Andy, now apparently they are Lana and Lily. Um, I I didn't really have an issue with Lana, but then the uh, other brother is like, no, I'm transgender too. Anyway, uh, leaving that aside, uh, The Matrix um, is a movie that I've seen a bunch of times and have large passages of it memorized without even really trying. For example, have you ever just stood and stared at it, marveled at its beauty, its brilliance? Sorry, it's genius. Billions of people just living out their lives, oblivious. See, I can do that more or less without practicing, which is why I got that one word wrong. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's quite a fun movie. Uh, it's an exciting movie. It's a visually stunning movie. Um, the frames, uh, the, the, the shot compositions are just immaculate. Um, I love the score. Um, the whole idea of it is lots of fun. Um, the reality being actually a virtual world created by this computer intelligence kind of like Skynet, I suppose, um, to keep humans uh, uh, placated while they harvest their uh, 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 natural body electricity and uh, heat for energy, because that's what the, uh, the robots need in order to survive. Um, it's uh, set uh, in a future year. They're not really sure the date, um, but it's made to look like 1999 in the virtual world, uh, which is when the movie came out. And Keanu Reeves, the main character, plays a guy named Tom Anderson, who has a hacker alias, Neo, um, who does all sorts of um, uh, criminal uh, uh, computer uh, activity uh, for extra bucks um, while he works his um, uh, straight-laced uh, computer programming job at a big company. And then he finds out from a couple people that, hey... The world isn't actually the world, it's a computer simulation, and that your body isn't walking around in this world right here like you think it is, it's actually plugged into this system uh, while you're laying in a pod, not moving ever since birth, um, uh, and uh, we're going to get you out, we're going to get you out, and we're going to free humankind, uh, but to do that, first of all, we need to acquaint yourself with what the rules of the matrix are, and which ones can be bent and broken um, and the, uh, as far as physical laws go. By the way, there are these characters called agents. They are sentient computer programs um, that are designed to interact with people, uh, make them look like federal agents, but they are there to make sure that the humans 
basically uh, don't realize that their world is uh, a virtual world and to uh, eliminate any threats uh, to the machine intelligence. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's, that's the gist of it, essentially. Um, I'm sure every one of you watching this knows what The Matrix is about, but just in case you happen to stumble across this video don't know what The Matrix is, um, thought I'd just sum it up quick for you. Um, and so when Keanu um, basically gets his training from uh, the Lawrence Fishburne character Morpheus uh, and the, um, uh, the attention and also guidance uh, and encouragement of Trinity, played by Carrie Ann Moss, um, he uh, becomes a super warrior in the end. Uh, he uh, um, basically uh, learns that there's this prophecy that he might be the chosen one of some kind uh, <laughs> and that he is going to basically free everyone uh, once he gains full access to his powers, you know, once he becomes enlightened um, and uh, becomes like uh, the cyber Jesus and is able to um, kick ass effortlessly without any kind of uh, uh, trouble at all. Um, and that's what happens basically in the sequels. That's probably one of the big reasons why people don't like the sequels uh, as much as the first one. Not only is it just like reams and reams of exposition, a lot of extra characters, but um, Keanu is is uh, uh, kind of unstoppable in those movies. He becomes sort of uh, unstoppable at the end of this movie, and so he's not the underdog anymore. Um, whereas uh, in the first movie, he's kind of just looking around going, whoa, I can't believe all this is actually real, and then uh, realizing his fighting skills when he gets them programmed into his directly into his brain. By the way, there's a really funny moment in the movie that I, I wish they could have done something more with, and that is when he's strapped into the chair and the tech guy, Tank, is basically feeding him one martial arts skill after another directly into his brain, um, Morpheus comes up and goes, how's he doing? Uh, and Tank says, 10 hours straight, man, he's a machine. And it would have been really funny if Morpheus had gone, hmm, gee, we better hope not, <laughs> because they're fighting against machines, right? Um, anyway, uh, so, uh, so yeah, Brehan picked this movie, of course, because it was a huge hit. It was very influential. They had the whole bullet time effect that people tried to, like, replicate for a while without a lot of success. It just ended up looking lame. Um, but also because primarily um, of the fight training. Uh, the actors went through tons and tons and tons of fight training, months of fight training before they even started shooting um, so that it would look credible, so that it would look like they could really do this stuff. Um, and so uh, that's something that's become more popular. Sure, the cat's on the windowsill now. I had to move my sunglasses. <clears throat> that's becoming more popular now uh, with uh, action movies. You know, they want everyone not only to look good, but also to move convincingly, to be able to fight convincingly. Um, I remember seeing on the uh, disc for a movie called The Hunted with Benicio Del Toro and Tommy Lee Jones. Um, they had a featurette on the disc, an extra feature about the knife fight training that they did. That was a big thing with that movie, you know, learning, you know, doing knife fighting between the characters. Um, and I'm like, Ah, this wouldn't even be a thing if it hadn't been for the Matrix, you know. If it hadn't been like it, it, everybody's just like really, really intent on making sure uh, that they look like they could do this stuff, even though it's it's all pre-planned and they have stunt doubles and wire rigging and everything like that. They want it to look. They want the training, uh, uh, the 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 promotion of the training to give credibility to what the actors are doing, even though it's all really pretend even though it's all choreographed and everything. Um, so they, you know, they really sort of push this knife fight training that they did for the movie. I'm just like, yeah, this, this, this is a thing now. This is, uh, this is something that uh, is uh, uh, what they do to help sort of sell the movie, really. Um, whereas before, I don't think they did that as much with The Matrix. I mean, they, they, you know, there were, there were featurettes about it. There were behind-the-scenes stuff, but, you know, they've really been pushing it. I mean, just look at any Mission Impossible movie that came out, you know, after, like, no, even with the second one. The second one was like, Tom Cruise did all his own stunts. I'm like, no, he didn't, okay? They used face replacement um, technology. The same stuff that they used to pull the masks off in that movie, you know, they uh, they did that on the um, uh, motorcycle stunt doubles, you know, because there's no way Tom Cruise would ride through a wall of fire on a motorcycle with his face unprotected for one shot in a movie, you know? They, they had to use effects for that, but... Ever since then, of course, you know, jumping off buildings, climbing up the tower, you know, and, and he just got hurt doing a stunt uh, just uh, earlier this week or last week on his new Mission Impossible movie. He hurt his ankle, uh, and so they <laughs> are going to have to, like, um, a, a halt production for a while so he can recover. But, uh, yeah, it's, like, super important now to, you know, to, to make, let everyone know. You know, the actors did lots of training. They got really good at this, that, and the other thing, even though it's, uh, even though it's all pre-planned and choreographed and there's, you know, wire riggings and safety harnesses and everything like that. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, sorry, back to the movie. The movie is uh, lots of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed rewatching it. Um, I know, you know, most of the dialogue by heart. Um, some of the other characters in this movie uh, that are really fun are the Joe Pantoliano character, uh, who sadly isn't in the sequels to their detriment. Um, he's always lots of fun. Uh, and, uh, of course, Hugo Weaving as Agent Smith. Hugo Weaving, this first movie I saw him in, and, oh my goodness, he is fantastic <laughs> as his character. I really like him as a V, of course, with the Wachowskis also uh, had something to do with. They um, wrote the, uh, they adapted the, uh, the comic book, they wrote the script, and they produced it. Um, so they got him to play a V, um, uh, the, the masked character. And, and, you know, there's lots of movies that he comes in for a little bit and just, just kills it. And he's great as, as his character. You know, the other guys are, are, you know, they're dressed similar to him, but he has this particular way of speaking, which is really exciting, the way he draws out his syllables. Um, it's lots of fun. Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, not, not, not like a great movie necessarily, as far as, like, you know, there, there's uh, just stuff in there that doesn't quite work for me. Um, I, I think that some of the acting is a little bit weak. Carrie Ann Moss, I think she's good and all that, but not great. Um, and and I, I find it interesting this sort of a gender reversal uh, in this film, the way that they have Keanu Reeves being sort of like the newbie to the group, um, and the woman uh, is actually the hard experienced warrior. Um, Keanu uh, is sort of like the naive person who's got this magical quality that everybody's drawn to, and they all sort of adore him, um, which is typically the the uh, female lead in a story like this rather than the male lead. Um, but, uh, yeah, a couple, couple of weak moments here and there. They use the Henry Thomas resuscitation method at the end to bring a character back to life by just saying, I love you, you know, and they're like, oh, that, that, was, that was fun. Um, so, yeah, it's not a movie that I love, but it's a movie that's a heck of a lot of fun and just, you know, like I said, immaculately uh, shot and cut. Um, the whole design of it is great, you know, and, uh, and I like a lot of the action as well. Um, so yeah, uh, although I'd seen it you know a bunch of times uh, and uh, and was very familiar with it, I had a fun time rewatching it. Um, so that's my uh, little video on the Matrix. And um, next week, um, two thousand, the year two thousand, and that will be uh, Ang Lee's uh, Oscar-nominated martial arts film, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That's Brehan's pick for two thousand. So I hope you tune in for that. If you'd like to read Brehan's article on the Matrix, I've linked it below. Also, the link to my Facebook uh, page is below, and the playlist where I've got all these videos for the series. If you'd like to see any of the previous ones, uh, please do check out Razor Wire Reviews and his uh, Epic Film Challenge videos, and Forkerball has uh, Epic Film Challenge videos on his channel as well. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Later.